I don't know when life really begins. When parents meet or grandparents were born. I think I'll just start from what I know. My name is Sam and I was born on the 5th of February 1999 in Denmark. Just after I uh, came out of my mum, she exclaimed, He's so cute! When the nurse moved my umbilical cord from between my legs, well, let's just say there was something missing. And that is the story of how I became a girl. Well, sort of. Spoiler alert, my mum's womb isn't my only coming out experience. June 6th that year was my christening. Considering I was unable to clothe myself or have any comprehension of attire for that matter, I complied with the dress code willingly. The full name my parents gave me was Matilda Corfitson. The first two and a half years of my life were spent in a Danish country home with my mum, dad and older brother. I don't really have any memories of living there though, only stories my family's told me. Then in 2001, we found ourselves with the house packed into a shipping container, relocating with us to the land of Vegemite and Kangaroo taxis, Australia. I was pretty shy as a kid. Once at kindergarten, I got super upset because I was convinced that my mum had left without saying goodbye. Good thing she was just a phone call away and our house is about 100 metres up the street. I got more confident as I moved into primary school and turned into a pretty cheeky kid. My best friend and I would pretend to be asleep after relaxation to get out of class. Out of school we would play outside, making potions and causing havoc on dirt piles. I can't say this impressed my mum since she would usually end up with the washing. I joined a soccer team with my brother, which was coached by my dad for a while. I liked playing on a mixed team because I felt like there was always something for me to prove. This was just the beginning for me in sport. I joined more soccer teams and also picked up badminton after practicing on the street with dad. Late primary school you'd be hard pressed to see me wearing anything other than hand-me-down clothes from my brother. Having my hair down was just as rare. There was approximately one day per year that my hair wasn't tied back in a ponytail. Ah, my fondest memories. School photo day. By my final year of primary school, my best mates were the boys in my year. Everyone pretty much saw me as one of them. There was even a point when they called me Matthew instead of Matilda. Lunches were spent playing soccer and chasey, which was awesome. When graduation came around, I went out clothes shopping with my mum with the freedom to choose whatever I wanted. Naturally, I decided on bright green high top converse, blue jeans and a Puma sports t-shirt. When I showed up, my teacher actually asked me if I was going home to get changed into my dress like all the other girls. I was so confused because I thought I was looking pretty fly. It was then I started questioning my clothing choices. With primary school fading in the rearview mirror, I moved on to high school and decided that it was time for a change. I started wearing a dress and after some classmates kindly explained to me that girls don't have hairy legs, I started shaving. My chest was flat but I still wore two sports bras just to feel comfortable. Getting changed for PE was so awful that I used to awkwardly hide in a toilet cubicle away from everyone else. Outside of school I was juggling so many interests which meant I rarely had free time. At one point I trained for 20 hours a week had piano lessons, was teaching myself guitar, practicing my drawing skills, all on top of a huge academic workload. It was an excellent way to keep myself busy or distracted. In year nine, I joined the school's volleyball program, which meant even more training. This was also the year I learnt what transgender meant. I was terrified and tried to completely push the thought from my mind. I managed okay for the next few years, focusing on school, sport, music, art, and writing, but I was constantly running from myself. At the start of year 11, I began to struggle and lost interest in nearly everything. Without ways to spend my time, my mind started catching up with me, slowly at first, then all at once. I was forced to take a good look at myself in the mirror 
and confront the thing I feared most of all, myself. It took another whole year of dragging this hidden truth behind me. Finally, I cut my hair. Then on January 6th, 2016, I gave in to myself. I wrote a letter explaining everything to my family. A few weeks later, I came out publicly as transgender, which immediately gave me this indescribable freedom. It was a short-lived honeymoon period, and before long, different clouds started rolling back in. I continued to struggle with school, had completely cut out sport, and could barely get out of the house. I felt stuck. I tried to get help. It took a long time to realise that help from other people would only work if I was willing to accept it fully, to stop denying problems and take life into my own hands. The decision to change came from the realisation that transitioning won't solve everything. I needed to heal myself. Slowly, I started bringing myself back to life, first in notebooks, then out loud. I became my own best friend replanting seeds of self-worth and confidence. Fast forward through months and weeks, days and hours, and minutes and seconds of mending myself, which brings me to now. The seeds have sprouted and grown. This is just the beginning. But right now, I'm just a tiny speck, planting more seeds on this crazy planet. A tiny, beautiful speck. And together, a lot of tiny specks can create something bigger and even more beautiful than that one tiny speck could ever have dreamed of. Hey there, as you may have guessed, I'm Sam, and this was me drawing my life. Of course, a lot of other stuff has happened in my 18 years, but I tried to choose things that feel significant to me. I wanted to be honest about all of the ups and downs that I've been through because that really is part of life. I think overcoming struggle builds a lot of character and as cliche as it might sound, I really am grateful for everything that I've been through. Now I feel even more prepared for anything that life will throw at me. Suffering really does turn into strength. So take care of yourself. I'll see you next time.